Okay, in a previous class, we formulated portfolio optimization problem using vectors and matrix. Today, we actually solve them using Microsoft Excel Solver. So you are an investor, and suppose you have 12 companies' stocks currently available for your investment. Barclays, Burberry, Compass Group, Diageo, EasyJet, HSBC, Next, Pearson, Royal Dutch Shell, Submira, Standard Charter, and Vodafone. The row next to their names are expected returns of these 12 stocks. For example, 0.0099 for Barclays, which is almost 1%. You might think 1% is too small, but actually these are monthly returns. So 1% per month is almost 12% per year, which isn't too bad. This vector of expected returns is what we call the mu vector. So let me call this region mu. So I select this region and click on the name bar, typing mu. Now this region is called mu. The next row is standard deviations of these 12 shares, about 17% for Barclays, about 11% for Burberry, and etc. But we don't use this row today because such risk information is included in the following variance covariance matrix. So this large area, the 12 by 12 matrix, is the variance covariance matrix of these 12 stock returns, which we called V. So let me call this region V. Okay. One of the simplest portfolios is the equally weighted portfolio for which the same amount of money is invested in each of the shares. Here we have 12 shares, so each of the shares gets one twelfth of the money, which is approximately 8.33%. So this is the equally weighted portfolio. 8.33% of your money goes to each of the shares. Let me make sure that these weights actually sum up to 1. And to do that, let me name this region as weight 0. And let me compute the sum. Starting with equal, I type sum and weight 0. The region named weight 0 is highlighted, so I enter, and it says 1. So we've just confirmed that the sum of these weights is actually 1. Now let's compute the expected return and risk of this equally weighted portfolio. The mean or the expectation of the portfolio return is given by the product of mu vector and the weight vector. So here we use the matrix multiplication of function mmult and we are going to multiply mu and weight 0. mu and weight 0. But actually when you take the inner product of two vectors the second vector should be in the form of a column vector. So I transpose the weight 0 using the transpose function. Okay, if you can't read it, it says equal m mult. The first component is mu, and the second component is transpose of weight 0 close the bracket and remember you can't simply enter whenever you use matrix function you should press control shift enter control shift enter not point not one one two so it's one point one two percent this is the expected return of this equally weighted portfolio now before computing the variance of the portfolio return just a quick recap so the variance of the portfolio return has this sandwich form, W, V, W. So we have to multiply three things, the weight vector in the form of a row vector, and then the variance covariance matrix, and then again the weight vector in the form of a column vector. When you multiply three matrices, let's say A, B, and C, you cannot simply write M mult A, B, C, because M mult function allows you 
to multiply only two matrices. So if you want to have the product of three matrices, you have to do it in two stages. One way is you multiply A and B first using m mult function, and then use another m mult function to multiply A, B, and C. So you have to nest two m mult functions. The other way is to multiply B and C first using m mult function, and then you multiply A to that result using another m mult function. Okay, so this is wrong. The other two are fine, either is fine. So let's compute the variance of the portfolio return then. I start with equal and type m mult and I type another m mult function to nest it. The first matrices are weight 0 and variance covariance matrix and the third matrix is weight 0 but this time it should be in the form of a column vector so I transpose this row vector so using transpose function transpose weight 0 closing bracket and closing another bracket and I should press Ctrl, Shift, Enter. This is the variance of the portfolio return. If I take the square root of this, that's the standard deviation of this equally weighted portfolio. So, this cell to the power 0.5. That's the same as taking square root. So the standard deviation of this equally weighted portfolio is 5.6% per month. Okay? Now, let's find a more sophisticated portfolio. For that, let's solve the first type of portfolio optimization problem we studied in the previous class. That is minimizing the risk or variance of the portfolio return, requiring the minimal acceptable expected return on the portfolio. For that, we use the same formulas. So let me copy and paste these equations first. And we are going to display our new portfolio weights here in this region. So let me call this region weight 1. Now, this region is now called weight 1. And accordingly, let me change the name of the weights used in these functions from weight 0 to weight 1. And don't forget to press Ctrl, Shift, Enter. Not just Enter, whenever you use matrix function. Enter. Now it says no values because the weight 1 is still blank. Now let's try the solver. So open the solver window under the data tab. Our objective is the cell E26. That's where the variance formula for the portfolio return is located and we want to minimize it, so click on min. We want to minimize the variance by changing the numbers in the cells that we called weight 1. So I simply type weight 1, and we have two constraints, so click on add. The first constraint is that the sum of the weights should be 1. The sum of the weights is located in E24, so I click on E24, and this should be equal to 1. Okay. So we have one constraint, E24 should be equal to 1. We have one more constraint, 
that is the expected return of the portfolio, which is located in cell E25, should be no smaller than some number. This number is totally up to the investor, so let's choose the expected return of the equally weighted portfolio, 0.0112. Okay. Okay. So this is the cell we want to minimize, which is minimized by changing the numbers in this region. And we have two constraints. And make sure that this box is unchecked because we have no non-negativity constraint. Click on solve. Solver found the solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. So let's keep solver solution. So let's see our solution. So in this portfolio, Barclays, Burberry, Standard Chartered, Royal Dutch Shell, these stocks are short sold. And 43% of the money goes to Diageo, 18% of the money goes to Next, 26% of the money goes to Pearson, and etc. And by doing so, the expected return of the portfolio is the same as the equally weighted portfolio, but the standard deviation of the portfolio return is now 4.2%, which is smaller than that of the equally weighted portfolio. I think I am running out of time, so let me skip the second problem and jump to the third problem in the previous class, the problem in which we maximize the expected return of the portfolio requiring the maximal acceptable variance. So I named this region as weight 3. And again, I copy and paste formulas and change the names from weight 0 to weight 3 in these formulas. And open the solver. Now the objective is the mean and we want to maximize it by changing weight 3 and the constraint is the sum is here k24 it should be equal to 1 And now the variance should be no larger than some number. The variance is in K26. And this is, this should be no larger than, let's set the variance of the equally weighted portfolio. And let's now add non-negativity constraint, no short selling constraint. So all the weights should be non-negative number. Okay, and we solve it. And solver has converged to the current solution, so it's not too bad. So don't buy Barclays, a Burberry, or a Compass Group. Just buy Diageo, EasyJet, Next, Pearson, Submitter, and so on. Now the risk is the same as the equally weighted portfolio, but the expected return is much higher, 1.65% per month. In this numerical example, these optimized portfolios are very concentrated, 43% of the money going to Submira or 43% of the money going to Diageo. So they look actually much riskier than the equally weighted portfolio. But I think it's just because of the variance covariance matrix. Maybe it is not well estimated in this numerical example. But I hope you still get some basic idea of the procedure of portfolio optimization.